Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Tracy and I'm here to share my process with you in the hopes of getting you scrapping and having fun with pretty paper. Today I'm going to be scrapbooking these three photos of my daughter and I'm using the B Vicky Booten collection here. This is a paper pad. It's called Prime. Does that mean you get it with free delivery? I'm not sure. Uh, anyhow, this is a really beautiful collection of paper and I won it at a crop and I actually it was like a door prize. It was one of those things that they give to everybody who attended the crop and uh, that was at my local scrapbooking store a, a crop that she held off-site and I have a couple of other supplies including the die cuts that go with that some phrases from freckled fawn and um, some old crepe paper embellishments these are die cuts from the hip kit club from back about two years ago or at least a year and a half ago then I've also pulled out some mists and I'll tell you what those are when I go to use them and I'm grabbing some packaging because I want to do some mixed media on my background. So I pulled out what ends up being like a little page kit here in terms of just some supplies that I wanted to use for this uh, for this page. And so I'm pulling out a couple of different papers that are speaking to me. This background really speaks to me and I'd like to use it for a background. And then I'm just flipping through and familiarizing myself with all of these different papers. I love ledger paper for a background. And so I pulled that one out just thinking I might use it, but it, I was pretty sure that those pieces off to the side would be a little bit too distracting. So uh, I went with my first choice. I also pulled out that beautiful black and white floral and uh, uh, I like how that looks as well and then I'm just familiarizing myself with some of the die cuts that go in this collection um, I, that camera really popped out so that's the only thing I'm picking out for now but I'll revisit that afterwards I do kind of like my overall page planning first where I decide what kind of layers I might want and what the overall structure of the page will be and then I do my embellishing but every once in a while or maybe more than every once in a while but sometimes what I like to do is uh, pull out a couple of embellishments that I know I want to have on the page and that way I can design around uh, just keeping in mind that I would have a large-ish um, fairly dark element somewhere on the page so I want to make sure when I'm laying out my photos that I'm saving room for that camera. Now I'm taking some Liquitex clear gesso here. Now this has quite a bit more grit to it than what I like. I like a nice smooth chalky gesso um, as far as white gesso goes. This is the only clear gesso I've ever had. As you can see, it's a fairly large bottle and you don't really use a whole lot as a scrapbooker. So um, I bought it and I'm locked in now to this choice. Um, <clears throat> if I felt terribly strongly about it, I might, uh, you know, pass it on and get a new one, but uh, I'm okay with it. It is quite a bit grittier than I like it to be, but that's all right. I'm drying it with my heat tool here and I'm adding some clear gesso because I don't want to, I, I don't want white gesso here. I don't want to um, whiten my background. I just want to strengthen it so that if I add some water and mist to this, the page isn't going to buckle. And if I move that mist around on the page, it's not going to start to pill up my paper and um, create problems for me. <clears throat> So now I'm just doing a little test of all of my mists because I wasn't sure what they look like. So I have Cotton Candy Spritz by Shimmers and I also have Mustard Seed by Vibes and I have Mr. Huey's Taxi. And I had decided that the Mr. Huey's Taxi was actually too bright, but then I forgot and used it anyways. <laughs> so I have a brighter yellow on there than what I really wanted, but I think I just went with it. So I just, uh, you know, sprayed the mist onto the packaging and then splotched it onto the page, as you just saw. There's no rhyme or reason. I just, I wanted to make sure that the color would extend a little bit around where I think the photos would go. So I'm keeping in mind the size and shape of the photos when I held them up um, before I got started. I kind of put all three of the photos together and got a sense of how much space it would take up on the page. So I was just keeping that in mind as I added that yellow. My original plan was to add one of the yellows or maybe both of the yellows and also some of the pink spray, but I decided against adding any pink. There is some pink already on the background paper towards the bottom and I just didn't feel like it was really necessary. 
So I went to my texture drawer. That's why I was out of frame for a little while. I keep a Jetmax cube drawer filled with various household items like paper bags. And this is some Stampin' Up! Um, crepe paper. I don't know what they called it. They, they don't sell it anymore, but it was one of my favorite supplies. I was so sad when they stopped selling. It was just one of those seasonal things. It wasn't in their regular um, catalog, but I really loved this stuff. Who knows, maybe they've brought it back, but uh, it wasn't around the last time I looked for some, but I have plenty, so I don't need any more. It comes like quite a lot on a roll. So if you're lucky enough to get some, you probably still have some left. So go dig it out because it's really fun to work with. It gives me that nice texture and uh, not a lot of visual um, weight. And so I, that was just what I was looking for because I don't want my layer behind the photos to compete with this black and white floral. Actually, I don't think it's floral. It's more of a leaf or botanical pattern. So again, I'm just designing around that camera, thinking I'll probably put the camera there. So I want my layers to um, kind of layer nicely with that. I want it to hang over a little bit on the side there. And I'm putting the camera so that it overlaps with her jacket. You can see her jacket in the other shots. And so I didn't feel too badly. I don't like to cover huge parts or crop down my photos too much because things like the jacket she wore when she was 14 might be something that we're wanting to look back on and remember. Uh, there might be a story behind that jacket that we might remember, even if it's not part of the page, like just kind of, I find that my kids, when they look at my project life and my scrapbook pages, they are more, they notice these details. They're like, oh, remember that jacket? And I just, that wasn't part of the story at all. But so I like to kind of keep that in mind when I'm designing my pages to leave in some things in the background and not crop things out too much. Um, so I like how this is looking and I really what I love about these die cuts right here from the hip kit club is that they bring this really nice bright white into the page. I find that that uh, Vicki Booten uh, background paper is it's not quite as cream as some distressed papers are but it's not quite as white as the white in the snow of the photos and I just want to make sure that there's plenty of white. I want this page to have a very light white airy feel to it and so I'm going to use these die cuts in order to do that. My favorite part of these die cuts are those little black and white leaves and gray and white leaves and so I'm positioning all of the floral pieces in such a way that my favorite parts of the leaves are showing <laughs> more so than the flowers. I do like the flowers too but uh, <clears throat> the leaves are really speaking to me and I like how the leaves pick up on the black in her coat as well. So I thought I might have a secondary cluster so uh, I often do that as a place to anchor some extra journaling or a date or something so as I design this I'm thinking this is giving me a nice visual triangle from each of those three clusters of flowers. I thought I might use these canvas stars that also came in the same hip kit and that's from so many years ago that I can't even tell you. Uh, it's, a, it's about two years ago. Maybe a year and a half. Um, but it's uh, those stars came in that kit is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> oh, hang on a second. I didn't know there was another camera in here. I don't know how that escaped me, but I'm kind of digging that camera a little bit more. Again, remember I was saying that I wanted to go with a light airy feel and that camera is definitely lighter and airier than that dark one. So that's what I'm thinking there. I really am loving these banners. I don't use a whole lot of banners on my pages, but I do sometimes and these are really speaking to me. I like the yellow. So as you can see, I'm really using yellow here as a design element. It's anchor, It's kind of pulling everything together. So I've got that yellow banner. I'll layer it with the green one. I don't think I'll use that multicolored one. And I've got yellow, <clears throat> pardon me, yellow is showing up in both, in all three of my corners at this point. Now this camera I really like, but it wasn't quite heavy enough. So I think the other camera was probably a little too heavy and this one as it was was just not heavy enough. So I'm just taking a marker and I'm adding some heavy lines. Not, it, I'm actually using a finer tipped marker but I'm going over it over and over again to make sure that those lines are nice and dark. 
So I pulled off the old camera and I'm going to, as I did with the other camera, use some dimensional adhesive here. My favorite dimensional adhesive is Stampin' Up. I like the, I like the height of it. It's, it's less thick than some dimensional adhesive and I find that I can just double it up if I want something particularly dimensional. So this is going to look quite nice right there. I like how that looks and you've got that little bit of yellow peeking out at the top. It's like a bit of a, of a more orangey yellow, but also the yellow flowers right beside the orange. I'm just going to try to position this so that uh, I think I want to make sure that I can see those yellow flowers there on the side, those two little ones. So I kind of tilted it and put it in the other corner and I really like how that turned out. Now I was trying to decide here, am I going to put these layers behind the, the tissue paper or am I going to put it behind the photo? And I like it behind the photo because you can see more of those flowers. And then these banners will just layer like that. I really am liking how this is looking. So then I actually ran into some technical difficulties. So right here I'm just having second thoughts about my background and trying to decide do, do I like it with that mixed media of yellow or do I like it more with the uh, kind of natural background the way it was. Now I did run into some technical difficulties here and you might notice that I'm using a different camera here and that's kind of part of the technical difficulties. I was live streaming with my patrons over on Patreon and um, my overhead camera just conked out um, and in the process I didn't turn on the overhead camera that I use for my process videos. So you might notice that this camera is quite a bit different. It's a bit brighter and more actually I really like the how true to color it is but the problem with this camera is it doesn't focus automatically quite as nicely as the other one. So there's pros and cons to using both of the, the cameras. My regular process video camera. I really do like that it focuses better but I wish that it was as bright and true to color as this one. I don't know which is more important. Um, it's actually quite a bit easier for me to make a process video using this camera that you're seeing right now so I might do a couple more process videos with this one and see if it's worth it because yeah it, it's a bit of a luxury having two cameras. I might as well kind of see which one is better. So one of the things that I discovered when uh, I was encountering those technical difficulties and I was sitting there trying to figure out how to get my camera up and running again, um, I looked at my layout and thought it needs more white on the background. And the reason is that, as I mentioned, I want this to have a light, airy white feel to it. And that background paper just wasn't doing it for me. It was just a little bit too much contrast. I mean, there is that white in the clouds, but there's not a whole lot of white right next to the layers. And the contrast between the layers being kind of very white, the, like the white on those hip kit embellishments really pops. And then the white in the photos themselves really pops. And it just, the contrast between that and where the layers meet the background page was just it looked a little bit too dingy and so I decided to add this bubble wrap this is my favorite way to add um, bubble wrap texture to a page is to um, just take some bubble wrap wipe some paint on it and then just stamp it onto my page it's so easy and then I'll just keep that bubble wrap with the white on it and use it over and over again I don't typically mix colors just in case like little bits of dried up paint get mixed into the like if you're using it over and over again sometimes it causes a bit of messiness but uh, you can definitely use that same piece of bubble wrap uh, several times with white paint so there we go. I like how this is looking. I think that that bubble wrap really does make a big difference. I'm playing around with the idea of doing different orientations, but of course with the cloud up there, it kind of locks me into this orientation. And then that that um, writing in the bottom corner that is on the background paper, it also kind of anchors the bottom of the page and it, it works. It works really well like that. So now I'm deciding to, uh, I'm making a big, big, big mistake here because I haven't scrapbooked in a long time and I forgot how much, I, my thought was, why haven't I used these white Mr. Hueys? I still have some left because they don't make this stuff anymore and it's the brightest of white. I don't know if it's brighter than all the others, but it's definitely the brightest white of all the mists that I have, except maybe Liquitex ink. Um, 
And so I thought, oh, I should be using this. But what I forgot is that it doesn't truly dry. And then as you're working, it gets on your hands. That is going to cause me some trouble a little bit later on in this page. But for now, I'm very pleased with myself for pulling out my old, old Mr. Huey's in opaque white and thinking that this just makes the page look perfect. Now, what it really needs is a little bit of black. And so I'm trying to think about what do I want to use for black? And I thought for a second of using my Liquitex black ink, uh, which I really should have used for the white, but then I remembered I have this Studio Calico, it's called Skyscraper. It came in a kit, it wasn't available for sale, I don't think. Uh, and it's a very, very dark gray, so it works in place of a black. It won't be quite as, as um, bright of a black as if I had used black or black paint or that Liquitex black ink, but uh, it will do. It will add this. I just wanted a little bit of contrast to all the white. And sometimes white looks even whiter when you pair it with black. So that's a, that's a good way to um, kind of from a design perspective, brighten up the white and draw attention to the white, I guess, by adding that contrast. So that's around where I want this to go. I want it to go so that you can see the black and the white splatters. And now here I am just <laughs> trying to add a, a few more without getting it all over the place. And luckily it didn't get all over the place. Don't worry, I make my share of mistakes on this page, <laughs> but that wasn't one of them. <laughs> um, those black dots actually landed exactly where I wanted them to, which absolutely never happens. So that was kind of nice. I was all proud of myself again, but just wait. <laughs> it only lasts so long, and then I'll be like face palming in a second. Yeah, so there we go. That's going to go right there. I'm not sure why I'm taking so long to decide, but there it is. And you can really see the changes in the focus on this camera. I think it is a little annoying. I don't think I will use this camera anymore. It was a pinch. It was either use this camera or not have a process video at all. So that's the way it goes. And I was live streaming and I had to finish. So I had to, I always use this camera for live streaming, but I normally, what I do is at the same time that I'm live streaming, I will um, set up my process video camera and simultaneously film. And so what you're seeing is just the live stream portion. So that actually doesn't look as nice as the way that I had it at first with the green banner kind of running almost exactly parallel to the yellow one, but I like the casual look of the crisscrossy uh, nature of those two banners. And now I'm putting those canvas stars. I like the dynamic element that stars give to a layout. I do a lot of hearts and dots and... Uh, that sort of thing as as little floaty embellishments, but I really love the look of stars. Thought for a second about putting that clip on mainly just for the color, but it became pretty clear that I it didn't need to be on the page. I don't like just embellishing for the sake of embellishing. Most of the time, sometimes I do like that, but but not today. I'm looking at my roller date stamp, which of course doesn't go to 2020, which is one of the problems with taking a ginormous break from scrapbooking is those sorts of things uh, hit you when you come back. Uh, but this date stamp set from uh, Ellie Studio does have 2020 in it, but it's a bit bigger and I'm not sure if I want to use it, but I'm keeping it out just to remember to put the date on this page. Now, if you're wondering where I'm at, I went over to the other side of my scrap room to get my RASCOG, which is where I keep my letter stickers, my thickers anyways. Uh, so I have these yellow stickers. I thought a yellow title might be nice, but it's, it really, I think that there's just the right amount of yellow already on the page. And of course, I don't know if I mentioned at the beginning, but one of the reasons why I used yellow as my accent color is because she's wearing that yellow shirt that you can see just little smidgens of through her jacket. I was thinking about lots of different black letter stickers, but this happens every time I go through my black letter stickers looking for a, a sticker that I want to use. As soon as I get to this Heidi Swap foam glitter black 
letter sticker. None of the others compare to this font. I just like how it looks a little bit like a typewriter and it's such a bold black and it's got a little bit of glitter which is really nice on a snow layout and I just couldn't resist. Like I feel like I just should throw away all my other black stickers except that I know that I'll eventually run out of these. I only have about five packs of them. I stocked up because I liked them so much um, but eventually actually they're already starting to run a little slim. I think I've only got one pack that hasn't been uh, broken into yet. So I'm calling this Let It Snow and I'm pretty sure that I've titled at least one other layout Let It Snow somewhere in the course of all of my albums. In fact I'm pretty sure I've used Let It Snow several times by now for a title so I don't care about that. That's okay. But that's why I've titled this process video Let It Snow 2020 because if you search my channel looking for this layout you might find a bunch of other ones so I'm calling it 2020 to differentiate it. And I didn't want snow to be all even and lined up so I just kind of made it a little bit wonky and like a, with a bouncing baseline. Here's where I'm realizing that my daughter's face in the third photo there has a huge smudge of white Mr. Hueys on it and I'm not very pleased about that. <laughs> um, so I, you saw my keyboard there, that was just me reprinting the photos. And then there was also glue on one of the other ones. So I was thinking about perhaps replacing all of them. I wasn't sure how easy it would be to replace one. So I reprinted all of them and you'll see them come up. This is a set of Kelly Perky letter stickers. They're gray tile letter stickers with white letters on them. And I will admit this is not very visible. So I thought about outlining and I actually did outline just the, the tiles. And I do like doing this, but now it just kind of draws undue attention to the let it part of this title. And really the title doesn't really tell much of a story. This isn't much of a story layout. This is more like, look at my daughter in the snow that day type of a type of a layout. Uh, I do have a bit of a story that is in my project life spread for this week that basically says that, you know, we went outside for a little impromptu photo shoot. Um, and so I don't really need to like focus your attention by adding those black elements to those letter stickers and I kind of like how the letters it now this camera is very um, overexposed it's not overexposed but it's not doing a great job with the exposure the letters don't fade away quite as much as it looks in this in this shot but at the end you'll see some regular photos that are more representative of what it actually looks like in real life and you will find that it's 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 okay it doesn't look as um, washed out as it seems here it's funny because the rest of the layout is pretty accurate but it's definitely there are parts that are more blown out than others so there are those photos reprinted and I'm going to try to just I'm washing my hands before I touch anything <laughs> with a, with just a baby wipe to make sure I don't have any of that Mr. Huey's. I tell you, it gets everywhere. It was all on like the bottoms of my hands where your hand rests on the on the table when you're writing and stuff. So I wasn't sure how difficult this would be, but basically I just with lots of patience loosened everything that was layered over top of that and then I decided to just leave the photo in place so that I could get this one exactly where the other one was and that actually worked so well that and it was much easier than I thought it was going to be so I just left it and thought I'm not going to tempt the scrapbooking gods by trying to mess up anything else so now I'm just stapling in the middle of the page and I do have a video about that you can search my channel um uh I'll see if I can figure out a way to to get that video um for you guys but I do have a um a staple focused stapler focused video on my channel it's been too long since I've done this and I can't remember how I how I link those things, but I'll figure it out. So yeah, these were photos that I didn't end up using and I've already done my project life for this, so I'll I'll just pass those on to her. She might want them. And that's just a piece of foam that I put under my page for when I staple in the middle of a layout. But basically you can just take your Tim Holtz uh, tiny attacher apart and flip the flip the arm back onto itself and then you can staple anywhere on the page but you do need a piece of foam underneath. 
So here are the photos and you can see by that photo that just that just left that um, you can see those letters for let it in the snow. And then I just did really, really brief journaling. So there's those letter stickers. I think they look nice like that. And wow, those Hip Kit Club die cuts look so amazing on a winter page. Those were from a summer kit. I remember specifically they came in a summer kit. So it's really cool to be able to use um, stuff out of season. That's always something that I get a bit of a kick out of. Check out these other videos if you want to see more from me. And have a really great scrappy week.